Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing when I'm going to attempt to make a coconut flavoured sparkling wine. So here's my key ingredient, innocent coconut water. So this is the water that comes out of a coconut. It's not coconut milk as such, it's not manufactured and it has nothing in it other than the water from three coconuts in one of these cartons. I'm going to use somewhere between three and four of these cartons in this five litre brew. Along with a kilogram of brewing sugar and Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. It's a pretty straightforward uh, brew which is following the turbo cider method of using cartoned um, liquid rather than actually using fruit. So to begin I need to get my water warm so I'm just going to turn that on and then I'm going to gently add my sugar into the water. It's very fine brewing sugar and it dissolves fairly easily. I don't need the water to boil but I need it to get warm to help the dissolving. I've got all my sugar in now so I'm just going to give it a little stir to help facilitate the dissolving. But this is now just playing uh, really the waiting game. For my fermentation vessel I'm just using a Morrison's 5 litre spring water bottle. I've literally just emptied this so I know that it's completely clean, I don't need to sterilise it anymore. I'm just going to simply pour the coconut water from the carton through the funnel into the fermentation vessel. I'm just going to add two to begin with, then I'll add the sugar water and then I'll top up and see how much more coconut water I need. The sugar is necessary because the coconut water is very very low in sugar. Okay, looking at the pan now you can see that the kilogram of brewing sugar has dissolved. So I'm going to now pour this into the fermentation vessel. And there's still plenty of room in the top of the vessel, so I'll get another litre of coconut water in there. Now there's a nice amount of space at the top of my fermentation vessel, which is good. It means that when it forms a krause and the foamy head on top, that there's room for it in there. And if there isn't, I'm actually going to use a blow-off pipe with this one anyway, because I've run out of airlocks. Upon second thoughts, I am actually going to add some more coconut water into the top. And the reason is that I need to pour some of this out to take the original gravity and I'm not pouring that back in. I now need to pour some of this into the hydrometer jar to take the original gravity. So that now leaves me space on top for the Krausen. Okay, I've got my hydrometer. Just drop that in. Nice and buoyant. And I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.068. I'm now going to add into my brew just over a teaspoon of Lalvin sparkling wine and champagne yeast. So a nice rounded teaspoon and then about a third of a teaspoon. With that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of Young's yeast nutrient. And you can see in seconds that yeast gets very happy. The must is warm and very sweet. Everything you need for fermentation to happen. So I'm going to add my bone, which sits quite snugly, quite a long way down, but it does go. And there it is in place next to my other two demijohns. You can see the blow off pipe going down here into this other water bottle which has just got water in. The bubbles will come through the water bottle just like they would an airlock. 
So that's it for now folks, I'll be back in a couple of weeks time when this has finished fermenting and then we'll be looking at clearing it. So I'll see you then. Hey folks, it's coconut wine clearing day and here it is. This has fermented for two weeks, it fermented extremely quickly to begin with and then it slowed down and over the past week it's gone to virtually nothing. I've been fermenting it in this, um, just easing the cap to let the pressure out when need be but there's barely anything these days so I'm going to start clearing it today. Now you'll notice that there's barely any sediment. That We're talking about two mils of sediment in the bottom of this so I'm not going to bother siphoning it off, I'm just going to pour it into another demijohn which I've got here in the sink and then I'm going to add the findings as I'm doing that. I've got a glass here because I just want to have a little sample because I don't know whether I'm going to back flavour this one and back sweeten it. Depends how, depends what it's like so I'm just going to have a little sample because I've never made wine from coconut water before obviously. So it goes in fairly straightforward. It's a nice colour, there is a little bit of a opaqueness to it. I think it probably will come out very very pale like water. Well you know almost water clear. So a slightly larger sample than I want to try so I'll just put that in. So okay It doesn't particularly taste of coconut, it tastes like a fruit dry white wine, it tastes like a homebrew fruit dry white wine. It's not got that homebrew taste, you know that, that you often get from tap water, because I didn't use tap water, but it doesn't, if you'd given me this there's no way I would have guessed coconut, but the one thing knowing it is coconut that I got from that was the texture, which is a little bit, it's a little bit like oily, you know the coconut water's not like normal water. It's just got that like slight oily texture to it and that did come through. So I think when it comes to bottling this what I will do is I will back flavour it with some uh, my protein coconut flavour drops and that will make it then quite coconutty because I did want to achieve something that had a coconut flavour. I'm going to add into my Demijohn Finings A and just pour equivalent of about a teaspoon in that's enough and then I'm going to continue pouring the rest of this on top of that and that will just mix nicely then as is. Okay so I'm going to leave this that's left there, that's quite milky, there's a little bit of sediment in that, I don't need it and in actual fact that does show you that a one gallon demijohn does hold slightly less than a five litre water bottle. I always think of one gallon and a five litres as being the same but they're not, there is a, a small difference. I'm just rinsing my demijohn off and then I'm going to seal this in there and just give that another rinse. Okay so that's findings A in there, I need to wait an hour and then I'll add findings B so I'll be back in an hour. Okay an hour has passed and you can see that there is a small amount of sediment in the bottom, probably a centimetre. I'm not going to siphon it, I'm going to pour it and just try and avoid that if I can. So I'm pouring it back into the fermentation vessel now. Okay I'm going to leave the worst of the sediment, so there's that there, that is very milky, that's going to stay, so that goes down the sink and now it's going to go back into the demijohn and as it goes back into the demijohn I'll add findings B. I'm quite confident that this should clear, although you can never be sure. So findings B and again I'm going to add the same like I did findings A, about a teaspoon, thereabouts. And then I'm going to add this back in. The force of all this going through the funnel means that it will mix just fine with the finings, so I will be fine with the finings. Just give my damage on another rinse. So 
I'm probably going to leave this for a week now before I bottle it. We'll see how fast it clears, but I'm in no hurry and I would like it to be as clear as possible. So I'll see you later, folks. This has been clearing for only two days and just look how beautiful and clear that is. You can see the garden perfectly through it. Look at the colour, nice little slightly greenish tinge, but one of the most clear wines I've ever seen really. I'm very pleased with it because there's quite a lot in that demijohn. I've got six bottles, 750ml bottles in the sink. Will I get six? I'm not sure, but if I don't, I've got some 500s and 330s in reserve. I've got my bungs softening in hot water just to make them more malleable. I've got some brew sugar for carbon and priming. I've got my hydrometer flask and I've got cages. So we're all in place, so it's time to go and I'm going to begin by taking the bung out of the demijohn, popping the siphoning tube in. You'll note that I've got the bottom of the tube right down in the sediment, but that doesn't matter because the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer jar and I'm holding my tube firmly in place with this very handy tube clip. So just before I begin siphoning, I'm going to add some brewing sugar for priming into each of these bottles. I'm going to put one nicely rounded teaspoon in each bottle and then shake it through with my metal funnel. It's very fine, the brewing sugar, and that will be ample. So now the sugar's in, it's time for the fun bit. So the milky first bit with the sediment in is going in the hydrometer jar, which is good. And then straight into the bottles. And there we go, we've got bubbles in the tube and it's gone a bit milky. That's with sediment. So I shall back pour that into the demijohn. So my last bottle isn't quite full enough, so I think I'll pour that and what's in the hydrometer jar into a 500ml and hope for the best. So before I can do that, I need to take the final gravity. I like it when it hits the bottom. And this is a final gravity of 0 0.992, which is an excellent outcome. All the sugars have been used up. This is going to be good, strong wine. So it's time to work out the alcohol by volume using the original gravity and the final gravity. So the original gravity was 1.068. I deduct from that. The final gravity, which is 0.992, that equals 0.076, and I multiply this by 131.25 to give me a final alcohol by volume of 9.975%. I'm just going to say 10% because after the uh, carbonation has kicked in, that's going to go up slightly anyway. So I'm just going to say 10% and I'm very happy with that. So because the coconut flavour in the wine wasn't particularly noticeable, I'm going to back flavour the bottles with this My Protein Flav Drops. I'm going to add one pipette per 750ml bottle and two thirds of a pipette to the 500ml bottle. So now my bottles are filled, they need bunging and that's just a case of pushing in. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. I find that the posher bottles are the harder ones to do, but the supermarket own brand Prosecco and sparkling wine ones are a doddle. Ow. That one hurt a bit, that's a posher bottle. Once bungs are in place, cages need to go on, and these are just a safety feature. 
a very practical and useful one which will prevent the bungs flying out when the secondary fermentation kicks in. When these begin to carbonate inside the bottle and eat the sugar it will produce a CO2, it will produce pressure. If you don't put the cages on, it does happen. So I've got my bottles in the sink. I'm just going to give them all a rinse now to get any sticky residue off the outside because I need to label these and I need them to be clean. And then with my 500ml bottle, I need to use a crown capper. I haven't uh, particularly mastered the art of doing this yet, so I don't really enjoy it, but uh, it's something that I will have to get better at. So it's like looking at the predator. And that's what I call this from now on, the predator. And it's just a case of getting it balanced and pushing it gently. What I don't want is the bottle to slip. And actually it's been a lot easier doing it in the sink, pushing downwards than on a worktop, which is what I did last time. And it slipped a few times before. That feels quite sturdy. Let's have a look. I think we can say that that's a fair job. That looks okay to me. Yeah, doing it downwards in the sink is a lot easier than doing it at work surface level. So I'm just going to print off my labels. Now it's simply a case of popping my labels on as neatly as possible. I like to take a bit of pride in their appearance. And there they are. I've now got my bottles on my conditioning shelves where they will condition and get their sparkle through the yeast that's left inside the wine uh, eating up the brew sugar which I put in there. Now in order for this to happen they need to be at a temperature of about 20-ish or thereabouts and so to that end I've got them on these shelves which are temperature controlled. On the bottom shelf is a little thermometer connected to a thermostat in this plug just here. That's connected to a very slim radiator on the wall at the back. And when the temperature drops below 19.5, that kicks in and the radiator comes on. And when it gets to 20.5, like it is currently, the radiator switches off. And that means that these shelves are always at 19.5 and 20.5 on the bottom shelf, which is the coolest of the shelves. So that means the shelves above it are always a little bit warmer. And this top shelf is currently 21.6. So I'm going to leave these for two weeks. I will rotate the bottles every few days and they will come out with a sparkle. So the next uh, film that you see of this wine will be the opening and tasting. So I'll see you then folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's coconut sparkling wine opening night. Quite excited about this one as usual. How will it be? We'll just have to see. So what I'm looking for is a nice smell, a nice taste. I want it to look good. I'd like a sparkle. Even if it's just a small one, I'd like a sparkle. Am I going to get a pop? <coughs> small pop. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, there's a sparkle. It's not a massive sparkle. But that is beyond effervescence, that is a sparkle actually. There you go, look at that. Don't tell me that's not a sparkle. That's a blooming sparkle, that is. Right, let's have a taste. Well, actually, first let's have a smell. It smells really, really coconutty. Cheers, folks. That is really nice absolutely delicious. It's like Malibu in dry cider. Yeah, it's got that silky quality that coconut water has. It's kept that 
Um, it's sweeter than what I thought it was going to be. And I don't know whether that's down to the flavour drops or whether that's down to the uh, the sugar that I put in to make it carb. But whatever's happened, it's really good and I'll definitely make this one again. If you're a coconut fan, this is one for you for sure. Really, really delicious. Cheers, folks. Good health to you. And I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.